Right. So we are back for our lovely coffee chat. I've got my ginger kombucha here. It's absolutely delicious. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful day over here. How is it with you, Bryce? It's well, spring is always an interesting time of year down here in, in Georgia. We get a lot of tornadoes and all that kind of stuff this time of year. But, um, you know, the junctions of the seasons are interesting. It's always a very, you know, we think we, I talk a lot about friction and when the nature is, is taking its junction, it, it, there's always friction in the air, but it's beautiful outside today. Happy St. Patrick's day to all of our Irish friends out there. Funnily enough, they say there are more Irish people in America than there are in Ireland. And according to my DNA that I did before I knew it was bad, I have absolutely zero Irish in me, none whatsoever, which I was actually surprised about. But happy St. Patrick's Day to all of our Irish friends out there. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. They'll be celebrating that in style. It's a beautiful day in spring. The cats are all on the go. The wildlife's all on the go. It's a really, really lovely day today. So I'm feeling tip topper. And we're going to be discussing some interesting stuff because you and I, we've been talking about so many different things for months and months now and about really feeling ready to sort of move off. Um, not that it hasn't been a great experience, but take the focus off what's wrong and, and put it on what we can do positively. And certainly I've been really looking at where I'm going with my channel and moving forward a lot of my focus. I'm still going to be having interesting conversations with all sorts of different people, but a lot of my focus is going to be how people can practically at a practical level, set their lives up for success. So that's their physical body, their emotional body, their spiritual body. Cause obviously, you know, I know when everyone knows they all link together. And one of the interesting things came up at that when we were just chatting was about self-integrity, wasn't it, as a starting yeah. point? Yeah, absolutely. Being integral to yourself. You know, when we, we um, I was actually, when we first started recording, I was thinking about someone said once, and I thought it was brilliant. I'm going to paraphrase. You know, we all have these dreams, these things that we want to do in our life. And, um, and so we have these fantasies about what we love. And I, and I think we have these dreams for a reason. That's we're all different. We all have something we want to do, but we don't get from point A to point B like that. We have to take steps to get in between where we are now and where that dream is. And so every day, if there, if you, like we were talking about, if you want to own an animal sanctuary, if you want to, you know, have a rehabilitation center for humans, you're not going to go from being just an, you know, an average person with a dream to then all of a sudden having that there has to be steps taken in between to get you to that point. And so every day making a conscious decision to do something, it doesn't have to be the big thing that changes everything, but something little to help help you get to closer to that point. I heard someone say once, um, do something today that yourself tomorrow will thank you for. That's such a good saying. And it's so important because we all go through different stages of our lives and we're all going to have ups and downs and periods where, for example, on a physical level, um, you know, I love the fact that Louise Hayes sort of says, if you're going to spring clean your house, you know you've got to get around every room, but it doesn't matter what room you start in unless you're having people over for dinner that night and then you might want to start in the dining room. And that's a bit like, you know, Stavar. So we've got how's our physical body. In a physical body, you can break down into lots of different e exercises. Let's keep it simple. Water, food and nutrition and exercise. And then you've got your mental body. So what are you doing to keep yourself positive there? What are you doing to control your thoughts, emotions? And then you've got your spiritual side. There's so many different areas to this. And all of us will have a different starting point because we'll all have something that's a priority in our life. So like for me at the moment, I'm I'm really good. At, I love my flask or energetic water bottles. And I'm really into, I have been for a long while, obviously my herbs, my supplements, my really good food. I love cooking, water quality, et cetera. But what I've really let slip is my stretching. So I do a lot of walking and movement because that's absolutely crucial to me. I just really, really need that. And I've set my life up to that every day includes a lot of that. But what I haven't done, much to my daughter's annoyance, is the stretching. So now, so everyone's got something, whilst I'm assuming stretching isn't an issue for you, you're going to have different priorities. 
Well, it's funny though, because when you do Ashtanga yoga, you'll, you'll do, you, you realize how sore you get from stretching. I've been sore for like 15 years. That's how, that's how intense that can be. But it's so, it is so important. It's so funny because when we talk about doing things every day to get you to a certain point, I actually just had a conversation with someone for 15 years now. I've been getting up at the crack of dawn and, and doing this crazy practice. And I, and I was on the phone with my friend. We were talking about this group we're going to be working through. And I'm like, not once in those 15 years have I ever gotten up in the morning and thought, oh, yay, I get to go bust my ass on my, not once have I ever thought that because that's what, that's what a discipline is. You do it because it serves you. And even though you four o'clock in the morning for me, I don't want to necessarily, you're tight if, in the early morning hours, your body is so tight. Like it's not, there's more of a vulnerability. And for 15 years, it hasn't been actually, it hasn't been pleasurable. I mean, I've enjoyed it at times, but, but it's because it's what sets me up for my day. Like anytime. And I think that's kind of the first step, regardless of whether it's getting up in the morning and taking a walk or meditating, or even something simple as making up your bed. The first thing you get up, it will set your mind into a, a productive routine. And I think one of the things that I've noticed, and I, I think this is really big in the Western world. I know it's probably just a human trait anyway, but I see it more in the Western world. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's amazing. Sorry. Sorry. No, I love it. Um, is we have this idea that being uncomfortable is wrong. And being uncomfortable is where magic happens. Yeah. And so and it's part of life, isn't it, yeah. guys? It's part of life. And I think you said something so important there about do something today that your tomorrow will thank you for. And that is so important because a lot of us, a lot of us, and I know every single person's um, situation is different. It's a little mitzy. Um, a lot of us are, are lucky enough to have a lot of choices mm -hmm. in the people. You know, just anyone who's got a chance to sit down and watch videos like this is normally in a pretty good place in their life in terms of compared to a lot of people globally where they're very much in survival mode. And consistency is really key. And, and there's a lot of talk about self-love, but I find it really fascinating. My dad always used to say this to me, you know, when he was growing up, they didn't give their kid you know they didn't have crisps and sweets and they had a few but you know it was everything was rationed and if you were good you got an orange or an apple and now we've got into a culture that we give our children a really sugary sweet or drink as a as a treat and it's like again anyone who's watching this knows that the whole world is upside down we've been tricked into really doing all sorts of things that are really bad for us physically and mentally but when you think just about that, why do we give our most precious, precious beings in the whole world, our children, something that's really bad for their health and call it a treat? Right, right. That actually drives me crazy. I, and maybe just being, you know, being born in the early 80s, like I, I thought I was laughing to say I was born into the jazzercise, low fat diet age. I remember my mother doing Richard Simmons, like the, you know, jazzercise stuff. And, and we, we've got, and as I've gotten older, it's like, we treat food, we treat these things as treats or punishment, treats or punishment. And mm -hmm. before we were filming, Catherine, you said something that I actually think the, as well, like every day in my life is a good day. I've set myself yeah. up to not just look, you know, that song, everybody's working for the weekend. Well, that's a pretty sad life. If Monday through Friday, you're miserable and you got two days a, 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 a week that you're actually looking forward to, then that's kind of a shit life in my opinion. And, um, and so you have that power though. That's the plot twist is that you have the power to control your, to set up your life in the way that you want to move forward with your life. And, um, and so, and that's how my life is. Like I enjoy every single day, like every single day I enjoy it. And, and it's because it's I, I, every day I'm, I'm happy you know, because it's, I've set it up that way and it's taken a long time. It's taken many years to get to that point. Um, you know, getting up at two o'clock in the morning in India was not fun, but I'm at that point now where I've had all these experiences to bring me here. And so when we have to be uncomfortable, we have to embrace being uncomfortable in order to change. And, um, a lot of people, you know, they want to have the specific life, but they're not willing to take those steps to get there. And, that's but that's your superpower is when you can actually put yourself through those steps to create that life that you want to live. I hope that makes sense. 
Yeah, it makes massive sense. And I'm in exactly the same. So my whole life, I'm just hold on to things because my internet connection cable is so dodgy here. Oh, no, Mitzi, darling. <laughs> we've been cut off again. Boris and I have been cut off for many a video. I need to get a better plugged in connection for my computer that's not so fragile. But so classic example, my whole life, I've had a lot of criticism for everyone saying, oh, because you've got so many animals, you can't be spontaneous and just disappear off whenever you want to. And I'm like, no, I can't. But the gift of what the animals give me, such brilliant physical health, rain or shine, snow, wind, all of the family members. I mean, my children are the fittest children ever because right since they've been born, they've been, had movement and being out in nature has been a huge part of their life. Um, so don't get me wrong. Again, there are times when I'm like, it's really cold and windy and wet and I don't want to get up and do them. But the benefits, there's always a sort of payoff, the benefits of what I get from sharing my life with the animals. But equally, what I think is really important, the message I want to get across today, when we talk about self-integrity, the first step to me is recognising what you're happy with and what you want to change, not judging yourself because, you know, the whole point is we learn by our mistakes. As you and I said, you know, 20 years ago, we weren't in the situation we're in now. Mm -mm. I've now got two grown-up children that, that can get around themselves and can drive and are working and or studying and whatever. So I'm not in the same place as I was when I had two toddlers, when yeah. my life had different pros and cons to it. So I think being really gentle to yourself, but having targets of or goals or whatever you want to call it is so important so okay this is where I'm at now and recognizing it it's like if you've got a drink problem there's no point with your family trying to send you along to get help you've got to accept that you've got a drink problem and if you accept that so being really honest with ourselves and accepting what areas of my life do I want to improve on and then having fun setting in place things because we're not going to be able to do it all at once. But wouldn't it be boring if we could? Uh, yeah, it would be. It would be. And I will. I mean, so like I, I'm the only female in the state of Georgia that's authorized to teach what I teach. And um, to me, that's a really big accomplishment that I made for myself. And I remember when the possibility of that coming, it overwhelmed me when I realized that. And the possibility of going back and forth. And, and um, of course, when we think about the big picture of what we're, we're working towards, and if we just cling to that, it can be. So that self being self gentle. And I remember thinking, okay, I just need to take this one day at a time while I'm here in India, one practice at a time. If it happens, it happens. And then it happened. And I think if I had focused on that, that um, it, I would have self sabotaged in a sense where it wouldn't have happened. And I do think that that being gentle with yourself and really breathing through things and allowing things to come that you've worked for, you know, it's not that, that things just fall in your lap because they do No, you usually have worked your life. You've worked for something and therefore you need to be gentle with yourself instead of like self sabotage which is something I think a lot of people do is self. I know I'm guilty of that from time to time to self sabotage. And, um, and yeah, and different phases of your life are going to offer you different, different, different things. I mean, I never, I think we've talked about this, Catherine. I never want to go back to my twenties. Hell no. no. Hell no. I don't want to go back to my twenties. I'm glad those I had fun. I lived in Los Angeles. I went to the Viper room almost every night. I had a lot of fun, but I'm th those days are over and I don't, and that was a different time. And, and, um, and so, yeah, it, it is going to, so you, you, and I also heard someone say this too. Don't ever compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10. Yes. That's really important because, you know, I, I have been quite a competitive person and it's really great when you then have fun doing something that you've got no expectation you're going to be good at. So I think I've mentioned before, my neighbor and I, who's hysterical, we decided we were going to do this thing called couch to 5K, which is building yourself up to running 5K. Now, to most people, most people can run 5K, but I've just never been a runner. I just don't enjoy running. Mm -hmm. But I thought I've, I've got to do myself a challenge. So I do that. But I never, it was such fun doing it because I, I never was trying to be a good runner. You know, I can walk for miles. I ride my horse. I love sprinting. I can jump over things. But long distance running, my husband and my children can just run forever. And they're amazing. But it's not me. But I still enjoyed the challenge. And actually, it was really funny to me. 
doing something and I know it's a tiny challenge but it was a no. fun challenge but doing a challenge where you've got no pressure on yourself to be good at it yeah I yeah. recommend to anyone because I used to be a gymnast so when I start my stretching if I can't get into all the positions that I used to be able to when I was 14 I've got a judgment there about myself even though I know it's ridiculous because that was 40 years ago but with the running I had no I just enjoyed it because I had no pressure on myself at all and no one else did and the children were like oh well done mum and even though my time was hysterically slow because I'd actually kept going they were like oh well done you know that's really good <laughs> Do you know, but it's not in a condescending way, just they were, they were having as much fun with it, laughing with me, not at me. And that's, that is such an important lesson, the dropping of expectation, because we will always put more expectation on ourselves than anybody else will. And it's, I, you know, I, uh, I was telling a class on Sunday, I was talking about soreness in the body and how even if you're sore, you still have to practice. And I told the story, there was this one time I was in Philadelphia, I used to fly up to Philadelphia to practice with my teacher, David Greek. And in Philadelphia, of course, all the buildings are really old. So his studio was like, Shala was way up on like the third floor. And these old buildings have very steep, narrow stairs. And it was the last day that I was there with him for this time period before I flew back to Atlanta. And I remember standing at the bottom of the stairs and my body was so effing sore. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get up the stairs. Like it was literally like, I don't know. And I, I got up there and I started, pra- it ended up being one of the best practices I ever had because I didn't have any expectations. I had no expectations of what was going to happen that day on the mat because I was sore. And so that is such a good lesson because when you drop those expectations, when you take the ego out of it, magic happens, joy happens. And another, another thing people say is comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, it really is. It so is. Um, and everyone can do something. So, you know, I'd like to set up on a little challenge and we're, we're going to be talking about this lots, lots more because the great thing is, isn't it brilliant that there's not a single person that's watching this? I, I can't imagine it, this would ever happen that hasn't got something they'd like to change or improve or, um, you know, try something new. And um, we're all going to have different things, but all of us will have similar, but, um, you know, benefits. So, for example, when we were speaking to Shanti about the meditation, literally you can start with three minutes. Yeah. You can literally start with three minutes. And even if you've got a newborn baby or you've got whatever your situation is, everyone can find three minutes, even if it's when you're sitting on the toilet. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so. that's, well, that's what I said. Like if you're, if you're looking for something to like jumpstart a new change and you don't, you're not someone who makes your bed up, just start making your bed up for a week and see, see what it does to you. You know, get yeah. an hour early and just go walk around the block. You don't have to do something super crazy that, you know, just, just to try, try drinking. If you're not a water drinker, try drinking a liter of water a day. See what happens. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, there's so many little things you can do and the little little things. Things, they add up, you know, it's, it's like a uh, back before cell phones, we had our telephone books, you know, um, and the yeah. papers and telephone books were like Bible paper. They were really thin. You know, Mm. and if if one paper alone looks like nothing, but if every day or every week you added another little, little thing you did by the end of the year, look how big of a change that is that you should see in your life. That whole telephone book adds up, you know? And so, and and this is, this is the, this is the world. I believe this is the world we're walking into. We can't sit around and wait for something that somebody do something for us. You know, you can't you and can feel frustrated and all that wasted energy. Of course, you're going to feel all the emotions. We're not saying shut down your emotions, but it's don't stay that. Concentrate. Right. And OK, I'm going to think about me and my family and my life. And now what do I want to do? Should we set everyone just like your love challenge, which is going around everywhere? I really love that. Should we set everyone who's listening, anyone who's drawn to, to have to set yourself one change that you're going to implement and you're going to stick to for the next 30 days. Oh, I love that. Put it in the comments below. And we do not mind at all, and I hope you don't mind at all, how big or small that change is. It literally can be the first thing I'm going to do when I get up in the morning is have a glass of water instead of coffee. Or it could be something really amazing like you're going to train for a marathon or something it it doesn't matter what it is I'll give you one something I started this week that I just started that's oil pulling 
I've, um, I did a show with Shanti about the Ayurvedic and I've, I've always done tongue scraping, but I never done oil pulling, even though my best friend's an oil puller. And after I did that show with Shanti, I was like, I'm going to try this. And so I've been oil pulling every morning. It's just an extra 10 minutes out of my morning, but it's actually made me feel a lot better because it pulls the oil from the digestive system out. I don't know if you guys are familiar with oil pulling, but I've heard, it's something I've wanted to do for ages. So is that on one of your videos? Us on the that. solutions. It's just basically you get a uh, coconut oil or avocado oil and you swish it first thing when you wake up before you drink, before you've had anything to eat or drink, you swish the oil around your mouth. Don't swallow it. For, I think you can start at 10 minutes, you can build up to 20 minutes, and then you spit the oil out, then you brush your teeth. What it does, what the oil does, when you sleep at night, all of the bacteria in your body comes up through your mouth. And so what the oil does, especially fatty oil like coconut oil, is it will pull toxins out of your mouth, and then you spit it out. And so it starts, and I've noticed a huge difference in the way that my whole over, my not just your oral health, because I was always very, very high, very clean, but just the way that my whole, it, it whitens your teeth. It's supposed to help with headaches. Um, if you drink a lot at night, it's supposed to allegedly help with not, this is alleged help with uh, hangovers because it pulls. And all how much do you use? How much oil do you like put a in? I'm going to start this. This is going to be mine as well. A tablespoon is basically what you, um, what you hold on one second, guys. I'll get, I'll, I ordered it specifically from an Ayurvedic shop. Let me get it. Hold on one second. And while she's doing that, it, it, this is a really good idea because this is something I've been thinking about doing for ages because I absolutely love, I, I'm going to tell you in a minute, the other things I use coconut oil for. But I'm going to try this because this is something I've wanted to do for ages. And I say, and I'm not being vain here saying it, but all everyone who says I'm 54 and everyone says I've got quite good skin for a 54-year-old, um, considering I'm out in the wind and the rain all day. But all I cleanse my face with is coconut oil. Yeah. So I just use normal coconut oil, so rub it in, even for an eye makeup remover, and wipe it off with a hot flannel and everything. And i tell you what, one, there's no nasty chemicals in it. It's way cheaper than buying some expensive face cream, and it makes your skin feel amazing. Apart oh, from yeah. the cats do, do like licking you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ordered this. It's called Guru Nanda. And you can find um, that lights. Let me actually turn my off for a second. You can see um, this is from an Ayurvedic shop here in the United States. Now, you can find Ayurvedic shops anywhere. If you just uh, Google oil pulling, um, mm. from any country you're in, just Google oil pulling. And I got this specifically. Now, you can get, you don't have to get something fancy. Yes. You, can, uh, you can just use coconut oil or avocado oil whatever because it, it does it is a very weird sensation because you don't want to swallow it because if you swallow it you're swallowing all of your toxins so you want to keep it in your mouth um but this so i fill it up it comes with a little cap uh to, uh, to 10 milliliters which is just right here so it's a very little bit it will get bigger in your mouth as it starts to pull yes. out all those back all that bacteria um but yeah it's it's uh see natural teeth white it whitens your teeth um, it just, it's so it's, and it's, it's it literally guys, like this is something that I just started, started doing this, this week. Um, I'm going to start, I've got the solid coconut oil, but that's great. Cause the solid coconut oil isn't fractured. It was soon melt in my mouth anyway. And you can put coconut, I put coconut oil in my hair from time to time. Yeah. It makes it soft. And, um, and it's literally like, I, if I were you guys, I didn't do this. I probably should have done this. Take a picture of your teeth. And then 30 days later, take a picture of your teeth. So you yes. see the difference. And right. um, I, I'm going to do that. So that's mine as well, because I, I had a couple of things, mine, but that's really, really good. Um, I am actually going to be starting next week. I'm, I'm taking quite a few days off, actually, and got some trips planned with my daughter and some stuff with you, Mitzi. She's sitting here right here, everyone. She's so cute. Um, she's doing really well. Um, and, um, and then when I get back the following week, I'm going to be starting my sort of series of, you know, talking about a lot of these things. And morning routines is so important, isn't it, Bryce? Morning oh, routine. yeah. The mornings I don't do my full morning routine. I feel like I'm lost all day. I feel crazy yeah. and you know, it's, it's, um, the morning. I was telling Catherine, I got, I cleaned my bathroom at five o'clock this morning before I started. Oh, did I? That was what was so funny. So did I, it was hysterical. <laughs> so, um, the be morning time's the best time. It's the quiet time. And, and that might be something for someone too. If you're, if you're not used to getting up early in, um, in the Ayurvedic system from 2am to 6am is the Vata time of day. It's actually easier to wake up between two and six than after six because that's Kappa time of day. And it's so quiet. They call it the time of God. It's Brahma Morta. It's the time of God. It's so quiet in the world that it's amazing. The peace you have when you're 
doing mm-hmm. something at that time because everything else is just so I know runners, of course, here in Georgia, people in the summertime, especially people have to get up super early to run because it's too hot otherwise. And they talk about that here that at four, four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, running down the streets of Atlanta, and it's just quiet. It's just so yeah. quiet. No one's up and it's just you and God and your breath and your heart beating. And it's just such a very special, magical time. And so that might be a challenge for people watching too. get up an hour earlier. Or go to bed an hour earlier, which is another brilliant habit to get in. So, I mean, there's so many different things. Have a celery juice, um, gratitude journal, meditation. Go back to some of our meditation videos. Manifesting. Start to do some manifesting on doing things. There's so many things. It can be absolutely anything. It can be um, groom your dog or your cat consistently every day for a month or something like that. It doesn't matter what it is, but can you... Anyone who's happy to share, please share below because you'll inspire other people as well. And you can let us know how you're getting on. And then we will, because we can just remind everyone how it's going with with us and asking everyone else from the next few weeks. I'm really excited about that. That's great. I I know. We can take pictures oil pulling (laughs) together. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Brilliant. So anything else that you want to leave us with? Uh, I, well, you know, and the, I, we were talking about exercising and your animals with the veterinarian in uh, India that helps us with our dog rescue. He has a sign in his clinic that says, if you're overweight, it means your dog isn't getting enough exercise. So that I love that sign. So if, if that is so one of your changes might just be extra spend time with your dog or, you know, out walking it and, and uh, you know, make that a real big thing. Your dog will appreciate it. You'll, you'll, you'll love that time and that fresh air with your animals. That could be something too. So yeah, whatever you want to do. Agree with that. It's it's so, so true. And, um, you know, so pick something today. Don't wait till tomorrow because uh, we us humans are very good at that. Mm-hmm. One thing today, write it down somewhere. Really important to write it down somewhere. If it's a post-it note, a note on your phone, uh, you know, whatever it is. Because when you write it down, you're making a commitment to yourself and you'll remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and have fun doing it because each time you're doing it, remind yourself that your tomorrow's body or mind or person will thank you for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And I will be seeing Price again soon because we're just about to chat to the amazing Turn the Page with Janine. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.